first, Mallory Park on Sunday and Oulton Park on Monday with two races between the two teams on each circuit. Uh, Great Britain won last year. This year, the team is captained by the former world champion Barry Sheen. And here, setting the scene at Brown's Hatch, is Murray Walker. Two very powerful teams because the American team, captained by Dave Aldana, number 40, is also including Freddie Spencer, the Honda Works rider, and Dale Singleton, double Daytona 200 winner. But the British team is a very strong one too. Roger Marshall on the Suzuki, Chris Guy, also Keith Hewan, the British champion, and the British team led by a very confident Barry Sheen. You've got a really evenly balanced team this year. You know, the Americans got some good guys, we got some good guys, and uh, I think it's going to be very, very close. Now, you've had a pretty thin couple of years, but it all seems to have come good in 1982. A brilliant uh, second in the Argentine, two wins at Cadwell. W what's happened all of a sudden? Um, basically, what's happened is that uh, I got a bike that suits me. At the beginning of last year, um, I started to ride for Yamaha Factory, and I was riding a bike that was made for Kenny Roberts. Now I'm riding a bike that's made for Barry Sheen, and there's the difference. You know, I can't... Um, I don't think it's right for a rider to adapt to a bike. Uh, I think it's a lot easier to cut a bit of metal and yeah. change the design rather than it is to cut your arms or legs off. The experienced American captain, Dave Aldana, on their approach to the series. Uh, there will be some tactics that will have to be employed in this because uh, it's a group of eight people, not just one individual racing against one another. It's a combination of eight guys thinking and riding as one person. Uh, another factor that uh, is going to enter into this is that we don't have really the, the strongest team that we could have. However, the team that we do have without Kenny Roberts, who's the ex-world champion and uh, runner-up Randy Mamola, I think we still have a very strong field with a new contender coming in, up in the fields now by the name of Freddie Spencer, who I think will give uh, Barry Sheen a run for his money. Everybody is expecting to see a needle match between you and Barry Sheen on the works Yamaha. How do you feel about the characteristics of the two bikes after the Argentine Grand Prix? Well, I think after Argentine, um, you know, we, we know each other now pretty well. We had a really good race there. And the difference is, is Yamaha has top end and uh, the 500 is, uh, the Honda is a little lighter. And I think it comes off the turns a little better. So, um, you know, it's give and take and it ought to be interesting. I think. The Honda and the uh, Yamaha are very, very evenly matched, and Freddie and I are more or less on the same tyres, so it should be a good one. British hopes for the Transatlantic Trophy Series were given an early jolt in practice on Thursday when Ron Haslam crashed his Honda at Paddock Bend due to a sticking throttle. Coming down by the kiln there, and the carburetors have got a surge on them. So as soon as you tap the power on, it tends to go all at once, as it did there. And then from there, it wouldn't shut off, and it, it just, and then now the engine is flat out and it wouldn't shut. Now it's flat out all the way up there, and uh, just wouldn't shut off. So to finish, I just let go. But then when I was sliding, I thought I was okay, but as I can see now, I went back first into the barrier. And I didn't realise that. But with the throttle, I think I could have got away with it and pulled myself back on, but the, the throttle just stuck wide open. Now, there is something different at the beginning of the 1982 Transatlantic Trophy Series. The American team, who really work as a team, have got together and done their football huddle to give themselves confidence, not that they need it, because they are full of fire. And there is the man who could challenge Barry Sheen fast Freddie Spencer who is riding the new works two-stroke three-cylinder NS500 Honda the machine on which he finished in third place in the Argentine Grand Prix there is one of the two men who beat him number seven Barry Sheen who finished second in the Argentine to Kenny Roberts and is riding the brand new 1982 500 cc works Yamaha alongside him number 16 is the ex-British champion Keith Hewan, but right alongside Sheen, you see the man with the star on his helmet is Roger Marshall. It is 13 laps, and away they go, and into the lead goes Dale Singleton with Roger Marshall. 
and they go into the right hand at paddock together sheen is in about uh, fifth position well back there is roger marshall leading and with him number 43 is the american rider mike baldwin who is riding a thousand cc honda and roger marshall is a man who has a lot to prove double british champion he's been in the transatlantic trophy team before but this is the first year that he's had a works ride and he needs to show that he deserves it so it is marshall in the lead Baldwin on the Honda, the American in second place. Cresting the rise, 11 Marshall, 43 Baldwin, 19 Freddie Spencer, 18 Graham Wood, and in fifth position is Barry Sheen on the 500 Yamaha. And last of all at the moment, the American Mark Homchik on the 750 Yamaha. Now they are on to the section which leads down to Westfield on the first of these 13 laps and it's still Marshall leading it is still Baldwin in second position Barry Sheen is up into fourth place and four men have broken away incidentally as far as points are concerned you get 16 points for a win down to one point for 16th place and the positions that really matter strangely enough are not so much the leaders but the midfield men that we're looking at now and at the end, coming up to the end of lap one, Freddie Spencer is up into second position on the works Honda. And with me in the box is Rick Titone, representing the American Motorcycle Association. What do you think will be Spencer's tactics, Rick? Well, Freddie will probably lay back one or two laps and get the feel of the racetrack. The weather is changing a little, and I think he'll hold there until he can see his open way to go. Well, he's in second place now, and the battle is on because he's down to third and ahead of him second is Barry Sheen and Barry Sheen has fought his way up from about seventh position halfway around the first lap to second position and now is he going to take his teammate Roger Marshall who is leading he doesn't have to but knowing Barry and knowing that Barry has got Freddie Spencer behind him and that there is a considerable needle match in the nicest possible way between these two I think Barry will try and get ahead of Marshall realize though that this is not just a race to win for an individual it's a race for each of the two teams of eight representing the usa and great britain to get maximum points and marshall then on a thousand cc four stroke suzuki is ahead of sheen on a full works 500 cc yamaha and it looks as though those two are starting to get away a little bit from spencer 20 year old Freddie Spencer, number 19 on the Honda. Then it's Baldwin, so it's two British riders leading two Americans. And in fifth and sixth position, it's two more British riders. As round the right hander there goes Steve Parrish. Steve Parrish, incidentally, has taken the place of Ron Haslam, who is out of the race after having a very nasty crash in practice. Oh, he's quite all right. So she leaves now. And Freddie Spencer goes ahead of Roger Marshall at Paddock into the third lap. So it is a British rider leading an American. The British rider Marshall is in third position. Then the American Baldwin is in fourth place. Number 43, and there he is. Round the right-hander at Druids. Now they plunge down Graham Hill into Graham Hill Bend. And I'll put the watch now to see how fast Barry Sheen is going. And now they're getting quite spread out. There's about 15 seconds between number seven, the stylish ex-double world champion Sheen, who looks over his shoulder and he sees right behind him Spencer. The race is really on now. We are on lap three out of 13. And there's going to be another one of these races later this afternoon. Two legs at Rams Hatch today, at Mallory on Sunday, at Ulton Park on Monday to decide who wins the 1982 Transatlantic Trophy. Great Britain has won it seven times. America has won it four times. Rick Titone, what about Freddie Spencer now? Well, I think Freddie's just trying to hold his position and look for his opening. He's raced against Barry before. He respects Barry. He knows what he can do. And I think he'll just hold there until he sees the opening he needs. And how about Baldwin in fourth position chasing Roger Marshall? 
Well, that's a change in plans. Baldwin was supposed to be our rabbit. He was supposed to get out there and run with Barry, and then the rest of the team filled the midpoints, but maybe he got a bad start. There is Mike Baldwin, and just behind him, Graham Wood, the British rider on the Yamaha. So it's Britain, America. Britain, America, the first four. Then Britain is five with Wood. Britain is six with John Newbold. Britain is seven with Bob Smith. And America is eight with Dale Singleton. And I can't do mental arithmetic that quickly, but I would say that Britain at the present moment on lap four out of 13 has got a slight edge over the American team, but there's a long way to go. And now, there goes Barry Sheen, and he crosses my timing point now. One minute, 36 seconds is a speed of 98.01, which is about one mile an hour off the lap record, which is held by Barry himself. So it's Sheen, there is Marshall, third. 43, Baldwin, fourth. 18, Wood, fifth. Number five, John Newbold, sixth. There's the British champion, number one, Bob Smith. And number 37 there is the British reserve rider, Gary Lingham, who is in about eighth position. And there is Steve Parrish bringing up the rear. And what a gaggle of riders, five of them absolutely together, led by number 27, Steve Henshaw. This is the battle for eighth position with Steve Henshaw in the red and yellow leathers. Second on the circuit at that point, but ahead of them, of course, Another seven riders, led by Barry Sheen, who is now on his fifth lap in this 13-lap race. Steve Parrish, who is riding with an enormous scar on his shoulder, having just broken his collarbone, it was plated last week. It's Barry Sheen out on his own. Spencer, there, there is Sheen. And look at the riders' knees when you can. They look very lumpy and bulgy. That's because they all have heavy padding and some of them have special plastic football studs on their leathers so that they can literally rub on the ground. And get, there's Sheen doing it, getting his right knee right down onto the ground, back into the saddle, down behind the windscreen, still sitting off the saddle so that he's correctly placed to take the second half of the right-hander. And where is Freddie Spencer behind him? Now, there he is, still very, very close. And Keith Ewan, the ex-British champion, riding this year an official Suzuki Works bike, that is an ex-Randy Mamola bike, is obviously in trouble. Now, now, the Americans can start to take advantage because Keith Ewan is out of the race. What do you reckon, Rick Tito? Well... Barry rides this racetrack so exceptionally well, I think that Barry will win the race, but I hope that we can fill in some mid-range positions and gain the points we need to stay even. Over the line goes Sheen. Behind him goes Spencer. 2.4 seconds. Barry Sheen, who is in absolutely magnificent form this year, is increasing his advantage over Freddie Spencer. This man, number seven, Barry Sheen, double world champion, the man who's been riding for four years, so sorry, the man who has been riding for 14 years, a quite incredible man who speaks fluent Spanish, he speaks fluent French, he speaks fluent Italian, he flies his own helicopter, he is an accomplished pilot, he is a magnificent businessman, and he is a brilliant motorcycle road racer. Meantime, Barry Sheen and Freddie Spencer as we look at Dale Singleton, number 30, and behind him, Wes Cooley, the American in the blue and white leathers on the 1,000cc Suzuki, followed by Steve Parrish, who looks as though he's starting to close up a bit on that battle for eighth position. Go round the right-hander at Clark Curve to complete another lap, and I'm glad to say as we look now at this circuit and Barry Sheen, I'm glad to say that the sun is coming out, the rain clouds which were overhead and that we feared might be emptying their loads on the tarmac seem to be clearing away, and the slick tyres, which all these riders are using, of course, are more than justified and needed. Freddie Spencer, that's the three-cylinder works Honda, which shattered the motorcycle world a couple of weeks ago in the uh, Argentine by finishing in third position in its first race with this man on it, number 19, Freddie Spencer, who comes from Shreveport in Louisiana. But there's the leader, Barry Sheen, that night, 13 lap race. Watch this for style. Barry Sheen, into clear, into 
Clark curve, fourth gear, 110 miles an hour. Accelerate up, fifth gear, sixth gear, into the Brabham Strait. Slow down, crank it over, 130 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour round Paddock Bend. Accelerate up Halewood Hill. Down into second gear for Druids, the slowest corner on the course, 60 miles an hour. Freddie Spencer still chasing Sheen, and there is Spencer in the background as Sheen drops down Graham Hill. And Barry Sheen has already won a race in the Transatlantic Trophy Series eight times. He is top scorer since the series began in 1971. It looks as though he's going to make it nine. Now, what is the gap between number seven, Barry Sheen leading, number 19, Freddie Spencer in second place? There it is. Behind Spencer should be still number 11, Roger Marshall on the 1,000cc four-stroke Suzuki, and it is. And, and there is Baldwin, and right behind Baldwin, and ahead of Graham Wood is number five, John Newbold. Now, John Newbold was the top point scorer last year. 37 is the British Reserve, Gary Lingham. He is doing well. He is in seventh position. There is John Newbold. Nicknamed Joe 90, who went over to the TT for the first time last year and did brilliantly well. Third in the 500cc, fourth in the Formula One and Classic in his very first year in the Isle of Man. And there is John Newbold, number five, who comes from South Norlington, a butcher by trade when he's got time to do it, which isn't very much these days. And that's Graham Wood behind him, the British riders. And as they go by, there is the race leader, Barry Sheen. So it's Britain leading in the form of Sheen. In second place, America, Freddie Spencer. In third position, Britain, Roger Marshall. In fourth place, America, Baldwin. In fifth position, Britain, John Newbold. In sixth position, Britain, Graham Wood. In seventh position, uh, uh, Britain, Gary Lingham. In then in the next position, Bob Smith for Britain and across the line and into another lap. And this is the 12th, the last lap but one. Barry Sheen leads. Well, Sheen certainly seems to have regained all his previous sparkle and vigor, which had gone a bit over the last two years. And now, Marshall and Baldwin absolutely together in third and fourth places. So Mike Baldwin, the American, is putting on a tremendous charge on the last lap but one. Any comment, Rick Titone? Well, this is the telling hour, and if anybody's going to make it, Mike Baldwin will do the job. Mike Baldwin on a 1,000cc four-stroke Honda against Roger Marshall from Brick Baldwin, the American, of course who a couple of years ago broke his leg very badly and was out of racing for nearly two years, got back into racing, into the Honda Endurance team, and this year he is riding with his teammate Roberto Petri, the Venezuelan who is in this race for the Honda USA team. Marshall and Baldwin together, and any moment now, there, number seven, Barry Sheen, is coming into Clark Curve for the last time but one to start his 13th and last lap, looking as though he is going to make it nine Transatlantic Trophy Series wins in his superb career. Second and only just beaten by Kenny Roberts, his teammate in the Argentine Grand Prix this year. Then he came back to Britain and superbly won two races at Cadwell Park on his four-year-old 750 Yamaha last weekend. Very much in the groove in practice here, and uh, his tail is very, very well up, and he has been tipped by no less a rider than Kenny Roberts for world champion honours this year. This is the battle for third, Marshall and Baldwin, with Newbold just behind them. Don't forget that in second place is Freddie Spencer still. So, Britain's first and third, Americans second and fourth, and we're looking at the battle for third. There is the leader, Sheen. Sheen nonchalantly waving his hand to the crowd while he's still racing on the last lap. They're going to love that. Something like 
130 hey, he shrugs his shoulders where have they all gone he says to himself something like 130 horsepower underneath his right hand there we are fellas <laughs> well done barry sheen this is nonchalance if ever i saw it barry touring home that's his ninth win in the transit now spencer is going to be second but who is going to be third Freddie Spencer approaching the line on the NS500 Honda. Where is he? Where is Spencer? Spencer is missing. Spencer is missing, and across the line go Marshall in second position and Baldwin. Now, this has really blown things open. John Newbold in fourth position, Graham Wood in fifth, and that is Baldwin's bike has blown up. Uh, Rick? I don't know what happened to Freddie. He was there all the while, and then we lost him at the top of the hill. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like uh, Baldwin's bike has expired. Uh, looks like we're going to have some work to do between the legs. Very clearly a blown piston as the riders battling for those vital mid and end of race position. There's Spencer, Freddie Spencer, walking in, obviously telling the crowd, uh, I don't know what happened, he said. He shrugs his... Uh, shrugs his shoulders and uh, within there the american team captain dave aldana there is roberto petri the venezuelan and i wish i could lip read i can't tell you what spencer's saying but a bitter blow for america for freddie spencer and for honda on the last lap of the first leg of the 1982 transatlantic trophy series out of the race goes spencer but a fine win for barry sheen then who incidentally also put up the fastest lap of the race just a whisker off his own lap record to get 16 points for britain but look how the men behind him really packed the places for britain Roger Marshall second with 15 points. John Newbold fourth with 13 points. Just behind him, Graham Wood and Gary Lingham. Bob Smith, 10 points, the British champion. Keith Hewen got none because he pushed in, but nevertheless, the British team had a fine total of 89. The top American scorer was Mike Baldwin, who got 14 points for his third position. Then behind him, for eighth place, Dave Aldana got nine points, and for ninth position, Dale Singleton got eight. Then the rest of the American team were right back at the end of the field, as a result of which the score for the whole team was 47 points, and they finished no less than 42 points behind the Great Britain team. 13 laps, rain clouds overhead, Great Britain leads by 42 points, and Freddie Spencer is out of the American team for this race at any rate. There's the front rank lineup, and it's a good start this time for Barry Sheen, who, with Roger Marshall, leads into Paddock Bend on lap one. Up Halewood Hill, and in third position, it's Mike Baldwin from the American team, who's had a new engine put in his Honda since race one. We blew a valve in the first race, and Mike Baldwin is holding third position as they come down Halewood Hill into the left-hander of Graham Hill then, and it's still Sheen, Marshall, Baldwin, and it looks like Graham Wood in third position, fourth position, it is Graham Wood. So, British riders first, second, and fourth, and here is Sheen, Marshall, Baldwin, Wood, Roberto Pietri, the Venezuelan, is in fifth position, and there is the new American rider, number three, Alan Ward, bringing up the rear in his first race outside America, except for Canada. Sheen, Marshall, Marshall, like Sheen, is in absolutely superb form. He's on the big 1,000cc Formula One Suzuki. There's Baldwin, there's Wood, there's Pietri, there's Dale Singleton, and number 16, Keith Hewan, who had ignition trouble in his Suzuki. There's Hewan on the ex Randy Mamola Suzuki from last year. And there is Alan Ward, number three on the Mark 7 Suzuki. And Barry Sheen has got something really to go for in this race because there is a Marlborough Grand Slam prize of £20,000 if any rider can win all six races in the series, the two at Brands Hatch, the two at Mallory Park on Sunday, and the two at Alton Park on Monday. And the nearest that anybody has ever got to doing that was Kenny Roberts one year when he won four races. So, on lap two, out of 13, Barry Sheen leads for Britain, as he did all the way through 
the closing stages of race one. Sheen, Marshall, Baldwin, Wood. Round the left-hander at Surtees. Now, with me in the box, Rick Titone. Cruel luck, Rick, for Freddie Spencer, but do you think we're going to see him later in the series? Uh, yes, the word we have now is that they've sent to Belgium for some replacement parts for Freddie's factory Honda, and we will see Freddie back hopefully on Sunday. In the meantime, we've got our stake going with Ward, who's been hot to ride all week, and now he's getting his chance. And what about Mike Baldwin in third position in this race as we watch Sheen and Marshall and Baldwin coming up in third position? Well, we expected Baldwin to be our rabbit. In the first race, he got a late start. He got a good start in this race. And if anybody can run with Barry, we think Baldwin's the guy can do it. And he's pretty close to him now. There is number 43, Mike Baldwin, the man who two years ago badly broke his leg. Is last year in the Honda Endurance team. And he's was hoping to ride the new V4 Honda here, but no such luck, and he's on and across the frame four-cylinder Honda as Barry Sheen comes through, completing lap two, and the gap between Sheen and Baldwin is just over two seconds. But there's a bit of a battle developing behind the first three. There goes Baldwin, and now here are the next three up behind them, and it's Graham Wood the British rider, Roberto Pietri, battling for fourth position, and Keith Hewan is in sixth position. Hewan, there, there in the red leathers, the third of these three is Keith Hewan, number 16, on the 1981 Works Suzuki, chasing on the 500cc Yamaha, and Pietri is taking Graham Wood. There's Baldwin in third position. Is he the yes? And Pietri's moved up into fourth position. Number 88. Down to fifth goes Graham Wood. Down to sixth goes Keith Ewing. And what a terrific scrap behind them for seventh place. Pietri, one of these incredible people who seems to do well at everything. Number 88, Roberto Pietri, now in fourth position. Black Belt Judo, flies his own helicopter, has his own TV production company, lives in Hollywood, California, and races a motorcycle superbly. He's in fourth place, Roberto Pietri. And there, spread out, in line, there's Pietri. Keith Ewan is ahead of Graham Wood as well. So Keith Ewan has a moved ahead of his British teammate, Graham Wood, into fifth position. Down to six goes Graham Wood. Aldana is in seventh place. Dale Singleton is in eighth position. Al Aldana, the American captain, and Singleton is American too. So it's Great Britain with Barry Sheen leading. Roger Marshall, Great Britain second. Baldwin, America third. Pietri, America fourth. Then behind Pietri is Graham Hewan, uh, Keith Hewan for Britain in fifth position. There's the battle for third position, and Aldana and Singleton are closing up on Hewan and Wood and Pietri. There's Pietri, fourth. And see, there are now no less than eight riders bracketed by two seconds. This second leg of the Transatlantic Trophy Series of 1982 is much closer than the first. Pietri, Keith Hewan, fourth and fifth, pulling away from Graham Wood, who is sixth. And there's Roberto, and through a lovely bit of passing, Keith Hewitt really knows the racing line at Brands Hatch, and don't think Pete, Roberto Pietri, who is now battling for fourth position with Keith Hewitt, does not know these British circuits, of course, anything like as well as Keith Hewitt. Pietri rode here last year, but it was the first time he had, so it's a fine performance. And let us not forget also that these American riders, at best, only get about seven road racing rides in their own country per year, whereas the British riders can turn out every weekend in the racing period from about March through to October. Keith Hewitt then, really showing style. The ex-British champion is now up into fourth position. And there's the leader, Barry Sheen probably seeing those 20,000 pound notes already starting to show before his eyes, although he's still got four races to go at the end of this one. And how glorious it is for British enthusiasts anyway to see Barry Sheen so much back on form, and I know that our American friends here are saying the same thing. 
He had two bad years before after he changed from Suzuki to Yamaha, getting used to the machine, overcoming some other problems, and now he's right back on the top. Two wins at Cadwell last weekend. Before that, a magnificent second place in the Argentine Grand Prix, just behind the winner, Kenny Roberts, and just ahead of Freddie Spencer on the Honda. And now it looks as though he's going to make it two wins in two rides at Franz Hatch to give him 32 points. And Mark Komchik, we hear, one of the American team is out. And in fact, he went out on the start line. And she is now on lap five out of 13. There is the tall Roger Marshall from Grimsby in second place. And those two have now got an enormous lead over third place, man. But the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, almost together. There's Baldwin in third position. Into the right hander at Clark Curve. There's Bob Smith, the British champion on the Suzuki. And he's moving up through the field. It's Baldwin and Hewin is going through. Hewin goes through and Paddock. And as they go up Hillwood Rise to Druid's Hill Bend, there is Keith Hewan up into third place. So it's British riders, first, second and third. Down to fourth position goes Mike Baldwin. And Keith Hewan is the man of the race so far, but... Ricky Titone, how do you feel about things now? It's not looking so good for America at the moment. Well, it's still early in the series. Roberto's putting on a good ride. He's fresh off a superbike win at, uh, at, uh, in Italy, and uh, he's, he said in the pits that he's just getting used to the Suzuki. It's only the second time he rode it. Maybe Roberto can pick up some of the slack for us this time. And Roberto, number 88, Roberto Pietri, the extremely likable, genial Venezuelan, is in fifth position. Number 88, fifth, chasing Keith Hewan and Mike Baldwin. Baldwin in fourth position, Keith Hewan in third. There is Pietri, and he has got, he's ahead of Baldwin. And there's third, fourth, fifth, sixth together. Third, number 16, Keith Hewan. Fourth, number 88, there goes Graham Wood, Bob Smith, Dale Singleton, Steve Henshaw, and John Newbold, Richard Schlachter, and behind Richard Schlachter, Wes Cooley. Now the leaders, Barry Sheen in first position, Roger Marshall, both riding for Great Britain. There is Barry Sheen on lap seven. 13 lap race, so he hits over half distance. One win behind him already. 16 points for Britain from, for, from Barry Sheen already. And he is riding the 1982 brand new four-cylinder, stepped cylinder, two-stroke Yamaha which produces some 120 brake horsepower. And uh, Barry Sheen can, as they say, pop a wheelie, lift the front wheel off the ground in top gear even any time he likes. Such is the power of that bike. There's Hewitt in third position behind Roger Marshall. So the leading American rider is actually the Venezuelan, number 88, Pietri, who, as Rick Titone just said, really does seem to have got the swing of the Mark 7 Suzuki. This is his first real ride on it, this meeting, and he's now closed the gap between himself and Keith Hewan, who is in third place. Pietri, a magnificent win in the 200-mile uh, race at Imola, and watch these riders, see the way they get their legs right off the bike, they, they move right over to the side, they get out of the saddle, and they just let their knee kiss the tarmac, and Pietri is through! Up into third place, overlapped by Keith Hewitt, both of them, with their knees scraping along the ground, and they often have to buy new levers, go into Planet Bend on the eighth lap, absolutely together. Pietri in third place, Keith Hewan in fourth. Barry Sheen leads, Roger Marshall is in second place. In fifth place it is Mike Baldwin. In sixth place for Britain it is Graham Wood. In seventh place for Britain it is Bob Smith. In eighth place for Britain it is Steve Henshaw. In ninth place for America it is Dale Singleton. And so it looks, doing some quick mental arithmetic, 
as though both the lead and the midfield places are heavily packed by British riders. Roberto Pietri for America is in third position. Mike Baldwin for America is in fifth position. And then we go down to Dale Singleton, who is ninth. So Britain must be leading on points at the moment, but what a scrap. Now Keith Ewan goes through to third, or does he? He does not. Pietri holds it. The bikes, of course, unlike cars, have got much more room for manoeuvre. They are so narrow in relation to the width of the track in comparison with cars that they have got an enormous amount of extra room for overtaking, and they certainly make the most of it. Pietri, number 88, in third position for America. Keith Ewan, number 16, on the ex Randy Mamala, who finished second in the World Championship last year. Suzuki, in fourth place. And this is Barry Sheen, the race leader, on his ninth lap out of 13, on his way to a second win in the series. And just look at the gap. Barry Sheen put up the fastest lap in the first leg, 1 minute 35.2 seconds, a speed of 98.83 miles an hour, which was one-fifth of a second off his own all-time lap record of 99.04 miles an hour, and uh, he wasn't even trying by his standards. He was very trying from everybody else's point of view, but uh, there is the gap between Sheen, the leader, and from Grimsby, number 11, Roger Marshall, double British champion, 10 years' experience, he was in the British team in 1977. He was actually the double for David Essex in the film Super Dream Racer. It was not David Essex riding, it was Roger Marshall. And he was second in the 1980 Superbike British Championship. And now at last he's got the works ride that he has deserved for a long, long time. And he is headed only by Barry Sheen as he was in race one. And there is Baza passing his own helicopter, incidentally, which is parked just to the right of him now. There it is, you just see it. That's Barry Sheen's helicopter, the one on the left, of which he is a very accomplished pilot. Marshall completes lap nine, so just laps 10, 11, 12 and 13 to go for this man. Leading for Britain, Barry Sheen. It's still Pietri leading the American riders in third position on lap 10. And, and uh, having a tremendous scrap, and Hewan is up to third position. Keith Hewan is up to third position. There he is, number 16. Keith Hewan has displaced the Venezuelan representative in the American team, Roberto Pietri, who goes down to fourth place, ahead of fifth place man, American. Mike Baldwin, there's Baldwin, number 43, behind him in sixth place, Graham Wood for Britain. And this is undoubtedly the race of the race, and Pietri just loses his foot off the left foot rest. It doesn't seem to have done him any harm. He's retaken third position as they come out of Surtees to Pilgrim's Drop. Keith Hewitt watching points, watching where Pietri heals the machine over, watches his racing line, where he breaks, where he changes gear. And Mike Baldwin, meantime, is closing up on both of them. Baldwin with the new engine in his 1,000cc Honda. That may seem a little, seem a little unfair, a 1,000cc Honda against two 500cc machines in front of him. The Suzuki's of Pietri number 88 in third position and uh, Hewan number 16 in the fourth. But it's a much heavier bike and it's that much more difficult to ride. And Graham Wood is closing up now. There are the third, fourth, fifth and sixth men and the man in the blue and white leathers is Graham Wood for Britain in sixth position. And not so far behind Graham Wood who is sixth is Bob Smith for Britain, number one, the British champion, in seventh position. So, Barry Sheen leads for Britain. In second place, Roger Marshall for Britain. In third place, Keith Hewan for Britain. In fourth place is Roberto Pietri for America. In fifth position is Mike Baldwin for America. In sixth position is Graham Wood for Britain. In seventh position is Bob Smith for Britain. 
In eighth position is Steve Henshaw for Britain. In ninth position is Dale Singleton for America. Rick Titone, it looks as though you're going to have to fight very hard at Mallory and Alton to make up the deficiency. Well, Brands has always been your best track, and we've always done well at Alton, so we can only hope to use Mallory as a point to catch up and then go ahead and win at Alton. Right, well, we'll see. Meantime, let's just look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six riders together, chasing race leader Barry Sheen and the second place man Roger Marshall, who are out on their own, but in third position. It is Keith Ewan. In fourth position, number 88, Pietri. In fifth position for America, Baldwin on the big, powerful, but heavy Honda. They go over the crest, down towards Clearways, into Clark Curve, heel over together, and they're coming through to complete their 11th lap to start their penultimate lap, lap 12. Now, 16, Hewitt is third. Pietri and Baldwin is lining up to take Pietri on the inside, and Paddock and Graham Wood go straight past Baldwin. So, America has lost a place, Britain has gained one, and Graham Wood, number 18, riding the Fowlers of Bristol Yamaha, the Dennis Trollope entered machine, has now moved up another place. And he's chasing Roberto Pietri, who is in fourth position. Pietri, the class of the field. Why do you think Rick Pietri is going so well in this race in comparison with the first? Well, because it was the first ride he had on that Suzuki, and now he's getting used to it, and he's handling it much better, and we expect to see him do even uh, better when we get to uh, Mallory, and hopefully the long course at Alton, he can really let it run. Great friend of Barry Sheen is Roberto Pietri, and there is the master, and I use the word advisedly, looking over to see where the opposition is, and uh, that's the nearest opposition. And Barry, who is not only a master tactician and a superb rider, but he's at it again. He's, he's, uh, he's doing the friendly wave even before the last lap now. But I was saying he's not only a master tactician and he's on his last lap, but he's a super businessman. And if I know Barry Sheen, he will be uh, thinking of that Marlboro bonus of £20,000 now, as well as the riding if he can keep up his race-winning form at Brands Hatch over the Sunday races at Mallory and the Monday races at Alton Park, which you will, of course, be able to see on BBC television. Barry Sheen, last lap. 500cc works Yamaha. Third, Hewan. Fourth, Pietri. Fifth, Wood. Sixth, Baldwin. Seventh, Bob Smith. And there go the third to seventh men round the slowest corner on the course at Druids, down Graham Hill, round Graham Hill Bend, along the Cooper Strait, back into second gear for the 60 mile an hour Surtees left-hander, into Pilgrim's Drop and up to 140 miles an hour as Sheen goes round Westfield Bend. Roger Marshall still behind him in second place. Two-stroke, 500cc, leads four-stroke, 1,000cc, both ridden by British riders. And uh, Barry Sheen is actually coming up to lap Alan Ward, the American rider. He won't quite lap him, but give him another lap, and he certainly would have. And Barry Sheen waved home by the crowd as Alan Ward starts his last lap. Barry Sheen finishes his last lap to win for two races in succession to give Britain 32 points from his efforts alone, but what a battle for third position. It's Keith Hewan going into the last corner on the last lap in third place, ahead of Roberto Pietri from America, who's trying to take that third place from him. They're coming into the line together, and as they go across, it is Hewan third, Pietri fourth, Wood fifth, Bob Smith in sixth position in seventh place, and he's dropped right back is Mike Baldwin, and it is an ecstatic Barry Sheen giving the victory wave to the crowd all the way round the circuit. After the two rounds of Brands Hatch, the British team are in a very commanding position. Two wins from Barry Sheen give him 32 points. Two second places from Roger Marshall, 30 points. Fine performances from Graham Wood and Smith 
Even Gary Lingham, the de reserve, got 19 points, and they give the British team as a whole a total of 176 points. But it has not been a happy day for the American team. The top American scorer, Mike Baldwin, with 24 points, only equals the third best British rider. And the lack of Freddie Spencer has hit the American team very hard indeed. Nevertheless, fine rides from Roberto Pietri and Dale Singleton, but a total of 96 points from the Americans puts them 80 points behind the British team. As the tire problems, in fact.